Hi, I'm Jason Logson from Adventure-Logs.com and today I'm in sunny Corpus Christi's and the wind's a little bit light so I'm going to show you eight different ways to self-land your foil. Now I've been flying uh, foil kites for the most part of this last decade and this is what works for me. I'm using a Sol 10 meter today and uh, Infinity 3 bar. And make sure you stick all the way to the end of the video where I'm going to discuss some of the most important factors, some tips and hits and suggestions to help make this process safer. Remember, if you ever get to the point where you feel unsafe, just pull the safety. It's not worth being dragged over. To me, I think self-landing a foil kite is one of the most dangerous, if not most dangerous things you can do. So make sure you practice quite a lot when it's light and the nice open beaches, not near people, get it down, get your kite skills down so when it's really nuking, you know what you're doing. All right, so the first method is gonna be backstalling the kite through the power zone. I use this mostly when the wind is light after a hydrofoil session. It's just quick and easy and without problems. All right, you start by having the kite at 12 o'clock. Go ahead and grab your steering lines and pull them in to start the backstall. Now, as the kite descends through the power zone, you're gonna to wanna to shift your weight back to overcompensate that and adjust the tension on the steering lines to help reduce the rate of descent. Now you don't want this kite to ever crash on the ground, it's really bad for it. So use a little bit of finesse. As you can see, when one side goes up, you just need to pull a little bit more on that steering line to bring it down, back down nice and even. Now once the kite is on the ground where you like it and it's fine you can go ahead and unclip and slowly start walking up the lines if you notice I never tangle up my fingers in the lines I keep them nice and separated that way if the kite ever becomes overpowered in a gust or anything like that I'm unable to hold on to the kite I can easily let go of one side of the uh, lines which essentially is pull, uh, pulling the safety all right once you have the kite secured you're good to go All right, method number two is the one I use most frequently. Uh, you bring the kite to the edge of the wind window and basically backstall it then. Uh, this way, uh, you get a little bit less pull from the kite when it falls into that power zone and is more manageable. So once the kite is sitting there at the uh, wind window, not doing anything uh, strange, you can go ahead and backstall the kite. Now, as you backstall the kite, uh, you also then run very quickly upwind of the kite. You do this so the kite doesn't move, you move instead. Uh, having the kite swipe across the ground can damage it, uh, can get snars and problems, so this is just the best way of doing it. I move, not the kite. All right, once the kite is sitting the way you want, you can go ahead and run up the lines and secure it. All right, method number three, I'm gonna show you how to land a kite uh, using a fixed point. Basically, you can use anything like a tree, a post, uh, even a sea anchor or something like that. But uh, I had my uh, rim handy on my car and an old leash, so that will work as well. Now you have a couple options with this. You can go ahead and hook your tether in before you start the landing, or you can wait until afterwards to hook in. A couple cautions with hooking in before you land the kite is if you mess up and you let go of the kite and it relaunches, there's a very good chance that you may break the bar and then break your kite. Uh, so that's something to just keep in mind. Use caution if you're hooking in beforehand. Either way, uh, you just want to make sure that uh, you do just like the other two. Take your time. Don't crash the kite. Don't let it slide around if possible. 
Also, I know some people, they do like just leaving the kite backstalled, connected to a post or whatnot while they do something else. To me, I'd rather take the couple extra seconds, go up and secure the kite with a sandbag or anything like that. Um, it just prevents other problems from happening. All right, method number four is very similar, like using the, uh, the rim. Uh, instead, you're just using a sandbag. Same methods. Personally, for this one, I definitely would not hook into the sandbag until after the kite is landed on the ground and where I want it. Um, just like using anything else, a sand anchor or whatnot, just make sure it has enough weight and resistance to keep the kite where you want it. Other than that, it's straightforward like everything else. All right, method number five is basically backstalling or crashing the kite into some kind of object where the kite will just sit there and you can run up and grab it. Uh, today wasn't the best of um, examples. Uh, usually something like this, I'd rather use a post or something that's a little bit easier, but this will work just as well. A um, couple things with this, just... Uh, you need some pretty good kite skills to put the kite where you want it and uh, just ensure that the kite sits there before you unhook. All right, method number six is basically finding a wind shadow. Again, not the best example, but all I had at the moment, but I've used buildings and trees and basically anything that will block that kite. Um, it's pretty easy. Just again, make sure the kite is sitting how you want it before you unhook. I use a water landing method on beaches that are too small or too crowded. Essentially, you just lay the kite on water or drown it in a wave and it sticks to the water, which allows you to go up and grab it. Just ensure that your lines aren't being tangled up in the surf and causing problems later. Method number eight is pulling to safety. Usually I'll use this method if, I, if I'm just that overpowered where I know that I'm not gonna be able to hold on to the lines any other way. Uh, I do this a lot like backstalling at the edge of the wind window. Uh, it helps reduce the amount of stress put on the, on the safety line and the one side of the bridle Uh, keeping the line on the ground or as close to the ground also is another way to help reduce flapping and turning. And then you just walk up the lines like every other landing. Hi, well thanks for watching my video. And I just wanted to use these last uh, couple minutes to uh, kind of go over and review what I think are the most important parts of uh, self-landing these foil kites. Like I mentioned before, I've been doing this a long time and uh, these are what uh, I've learned throughout the years which are the most important. And I know you're gonna get tired of hearing it, but uh, if you ever get to the point where you feel like maybe you should pull the safety, just go ahead and pull it. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, if you do it right, uh, you won't get that big of a nest. And it's just, it's, it's better to do that than to hurt yourself or into your kite or anything like that. But let's, start, let's first talk a little bit about equipment and why I do what I do. I'm using the Fly Surfer Bar. Uh, the reason why I like the Fly Surfer Bar mostly is because I like exactly where those steering plastic balls are. For me, that's the perfect setup. I have used steering straps and I've used these balls, I've used them in combination. Personally for me, I just need the steering balls. Not only are they good for landing, but they're also great in the water if you need to grab a, a line and 
to turn the kite really quickly if you need to relaunch or anything like that. To me, it gives me the best control. Um, the back strap, I think, adds unnecessary clutter. Um, you've been flying kites long as me, you know that if something can happen, it will happen to me. That's just a tangle. I don't have as much control over it. I don't like it as much. And you can see, because I know exactly where those, those uh, plastic balls are, I know exactly how I'm going to land every single time. You see, I basically, I power fully, I fully power up on the trim. The reason I do that is because I know exactly when those two plastic balls are at the end of the bar, that's the perfect amount of backstall for my kite to sit there. You know, um, with the, uh, and that's why also, you see, when I hook in to a tether, I do all the lines. The reason I do that is I know it's going to sit there and it's not going to move around. So, with a strap, you don't have that much control. You don't quite know exactly what it is. So, for me, I know exactly how much I need and it works perfectly. And on top of that, these steering balls are adjustable. So, if you know that you need a little bit more back stall or a little bit less, you can adjust them so they're perfect every single time and it takes the thinking out of it. Go ahead and let's, let's talk about these landings really quick. Um, basically, they all are a different variation of the same thing, which is basically backstalling the kite to some point to keep it stationary so you can walk up. So, next time you have a session that the wind's just a little bit too light, you got skunked out, why don't you practice this a little bit, okay? So let's go ahead and start uh, breaking down these landings. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about pulling to safety because that's what most people are afraid of doing, me, myself included. I don't do it unless I absolutely have to, and quite honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Now, first off, if you are planning on pulling to safety for your landing and you're doing this ahead of time, don't ever pull the safety with the kite at 12. It, uh, that's where you're really going to get a big mess because it's got a long way to come down. It's going to you know, turn and rotate and all this stuff and just make a big mess for you. Also, that's a lot more stress on the safety system. Uh, if you're using Fly Surfer, it has that thick line that will expand. You do that a couple times, it'll just never go back to where it was. You're also putting uneven strain on the bridle. Uh, now, one side, you know, that, that initial jerk that's put in strain to the point where the kite might fly crookedly and things like that. So, me, if I know that I'm going to pull the safety, and I'll just do exactly like I did in the video. I'm going to put the kite just about to the 45, so it's kind of laying there, you know, not moving around. And then I'll pull the safety, and what I'll do is I'll immediately run upwind. Uh, at the same time, while I'm doing that, I make sure the bar is close to the ground as possible. Um, moving upwind means that the kite moves less. The less the kite moves, the less tangles it is. Also dragging it and things like that can cause problems. Uh, second, by putting the lines down on the ground, uh, you basically, it helps reduce the flapping of the kite. And it'll help it uh, reduce it moving around and things like this. And as you can see, um, I have increased the speed slightly, but it really isn't that big of a deal to recover from that. Uh, it just took me a couple minutes and nice slowly walking out the lines, kind of jerking them a little bit so that safety line goes through the bar. It's not that big of a deal. In less than a couple minutes, I was able to launch again. So really, it's not that bad of an option. Um, there's some times when I'm just that overpowered that that's the only option you have. So practice it. This is something that you don't want to do for the first time in real life. Um, you know, we are all kind of pilots. We're flying this wing. You know, use a little pilotage and, you know, practice. Practice pulling the kite, you know, to safety. That way you kind of know what's going to happen. Me, I don't like doing the first things in real life when I need to. I like to practice ahead of time. So enough of that safety deal. The uh, straight 12, the, uh, 12 straight down through the window, I use that when the wind is light. It's easy, but even that needs finesse. You never want to crash the kite to the ground. It's really bad for the internal structure. You might pop a cell. 
So what you want to do is, if you notice while I'm landing the kite, I'm constantly moving those steering lines in and out. You know, the more you pull in, the faster it's going to backstall and the harder it's going to land. So it takes a little bit of finesse. And if one wing goes up, then you know you need a little bit more pressure on that wing up to bring it down. So this just takes time. That's it. See how long you can keep it in one spot. You know, see if you can flip it around, things like that. Just have a little bit of fun with it. The more you practice, then the easier it is. Now, if any time the wind is too strong for me to go back, straight back, I always do what I did on the second time, which, which was just bring it to 45 degrees, backstall it. While it's backstalling, I run upward. And I do this for a couple of reasons. One, you should never let your kite drag across the beach. It's bad for the fabric. Your bridle lines can get caught and they can get tangled or damaged. Um, something might get caught and you can relaunch it, anything like that. I don't like moving my kite across on the beach. So that's what I'll do. Is I will run straight up wind so that kite's really not moving. And you do this good enough, then it's, it's not hard, it's pretty easy, and that's the way to go. When a kite is just sitting there, if you've noticed, after all my landings, I like to take a moment. I like to wait, take a breath, and see what the kite is doing. I don't like any surprises. Also, you notice that if there was a wing tip that's kind of, you know, folded in or anything that's not fully open, I will shake that kite to make sure the kite is fully open. Anytime there's some kind of fold or anything like that, you're just asking for something unusual or unprepared to happen in that kite for the relaunch. Now there's a couple things you can see. If after you backstall that kite, it's just bouncing back and forth. That probably means you don't have enough back uh, steering line pressure. Now, if you have too much steering line uh, pressure and too much pulled in, that bottom uh, trailing edge can actually flip up. And when that happens, wind can get underneath it, the kite can flip and relaunch. So always kind of take a moment see what the kite's doing, adjust if needed, and then go up to the kite. Now, very, very important when you bring your, when you go up to your kite, never ever allow yourself to be able to be tangled in the lines. So what that means is, you saw a couple times I came up and I rolled my fingers around the lines to get a better group. Never do that. That's a great way to lose a finger. I always, I just have my lines and I put some good pressure on my thumb and so they're nice and separate and that's how I go up and I reach my kite. The reason I do this is one, there's no way to get tangled. Two, I can see these lines. So if there's a gust that happens or something unusual happens where the kite becomes uncontrollable or I just don't have the strength to hold on to it, I can easily let go of two, two lines and basically that's kind of like flagging the kite out. And uh, if that, on top of that, now that you have two and it's still, you can't hold it, then you can go ahead and reach the, the inner line and totally flag it out. So that's why I do that. It's, it's a really good way of going up. Also, if you notice, I'll, I don't like to, to straddle the lines either. I will be on one side of them. Again, if I have to let go of the kite, and that bar comes flying up, it's not going to hit me. It's no big deal. I'd rather go run after a kite than hurt myself. So there you go. Eight different ways you can self-land a foil kite. If you have something that I haven't mentioned here that really works for you, make sure you put it down below. Something you don't agree with or something you want to add, same thing. Put it down there so everyone else can learn from it. Uh, this doesn't have to be that sketchy of maneuver. If You know, it... it with practice, you can get this down and you can land them confidently and without issues every single time. So again, this is Jason Logsom from Adventure-Logs.com. Thanking you for watching my video, and I'll see you guys out there.